Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's four. We have a really uh, cool session coming up about astronomy. Our next speaker, Luis, uh, has loved astro astronomy ever, ever since he was little. He would look at the stars and um, want to study them, understand what's going on. And um, there are studies where people say, why, why do we need to know about astronomy? What is the purpose of astronomy? It's interesting. Tell me more about it. But I don't want to dedicate uh, a lot of my time on this and also money. A lot of times you hear government, why are we researching space? Why are we sending rockets to space? Why are we studying planets that are so far away while there's people that are uh, hungry? Um, our next speaker has uh, spoken all over the world on this topic. He is uh, very familiar in the Campus Party Europe uh, circuit. Um, and his interest in this led to him having a scholarship, moving to Germany, uh, uh, and um, uh, preaching why this is a very important topic. I've said enough. I think he will take it over now. Give a big applause to Louis. So, yeah, what introducing. It's pretty awesome, actually. Yeah, so I'm Louis. I want, first of all, to, to thank for the organization. It was, it was amazing. The volume, the, all the details, everything really, really good. And they're introducing, mainly. It's very nice. Thanks a lot. And also to thank you. I mean, look at that. We're in a comp spot. There's so much entertainment things running around, and you're here listening about astronomy. That's pretty awesome. So thanks a lot to be here. And yeah, there are mainly two kind of persons that are listening to me now. I think the first one are the ones interested in astronomy, like you here. The second one's my mom that's watching via streaming. So hi, mom. It's always, always good to say. She loves that. And, <laughs> and so that's the thing. Why astronomy, right? I think we all have this same feeling. We, we, we see news after news in the newspaper. And it's always the same. We're always thinking at first this must be really uh, tiring, really complicated things, you know. But sometimes it's it's not that much, and we still have curiosity. And this is the curiosity I want to fix with you here and speak about. We'll do something really, really chilly, and not so not so much uh, theory things. But let's let's try to understand more our curiosity about astronomy so don't feel shy when you don't understand something when you read because actually it's pretty common in media to read things like that you know suspect meteorit found in waterfalls so the first thing you think is why well, what the meteorit has done I mean, why he's suspected and so you have a full text speaking about a stone that was found but nobody knows actually if it's if it comes from the sky or not so actually, it's pretty common to see uh, people confused about knowledge in, in, in astronomy. And it it's has always been this way. We are always curious about, since while we were crossing the seas, we were looking in the sky, searching for some direction, we, and we have our questions. We use it also the sky to plant. We use it the sky to answer religious questions, and also, we had some people that, like Copernicus, put the lenses to the sky and told from nothing that we are not in the center of the universe, and then they changed everything. Nowadays, it continues the same. The question have, has changed a bit. We are asking uh, how old are we, what's the fate of the universe, and of course, what everyone wants to know, where are the aliens, you know? Uh, it, they exist and everything. We still have the same questions, just with a slightly different approach, let's put it this way. And we can start to wonder, why? Why are we looking so much for the answers? Well, it's, it's eternal questions and questions and questions. And the thing is, we need to look for the answers. Actually, this pursuit for answers, that changes our life completely. And I will give you a quick example of how it has changed so far. We can go, for example, this is this is actually the ones the, the examples that I really 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 like to, to speak uh, with people. Let's start with something that's in your pocket. We are always looking at the sky, as I told. We we were using the sky to navigate, and we start to create maps. 
and from these maps we start to draw some lines, some guidelines that was the beginning of the latitude and longitude conception. After, after this, we, n we had a map and we knew how to go through it. So we had a brilliant idea, why don't you do the opposite? We have eyes looking the sky, so why don't you pu we put eyes on the sky looking to us? And this was the beginning of global positioning system, what you guys probably know as GPS, and you guys have this on your pocket. Astronomy helped to develop things like that. And you are basically using to find where the campus party is or something like that. We can see on the cell phone. I, I really like this example because always when I tell a guy, take the cell phone and look and say, yeah, there's astronomy inside. And this is the second thing. Uh, I don't know if it's from your age or if you remember that, but we had cameras that we used films inside. The guy's laughing, he do remember. <laughs> Uh, we, so we had this film that was a sensible to light with maximum 36 frames, you know, and this means that we could just take maximum 36 photos, basically, you know. And then things changed really, really fast in the early 20s when we changed the films to a thing called CCG, uh, Chartered Coupled Device Mimics, uh, but we know as CCG. And this small ship was developed by NASA when they were studying how best was the way to do the Hubble telescope. So it was made popular and changed the photography completely from one, for all of the sun, all of the sun, you know, for one, an hour to do, in few moments, let's put it this way. So, and we changed ast not only astronomy, but also photography. We have this, one of the classics from Hubble, you know, the Hubble uh, uh, deep field, where we had this, basically this photograph machine on the space photography for 10 days straight and we got something like that I mean it's so much information that's even hard to start we have stars close by we have many 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 galaxies and something that I particularly love to look on this photo it's so clear to see gravitational lenses you know all around so this is actually we can we can we can hold the Romans for the the, 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 the questions we have to go through but this is the kind of beauty we can do uh, when searching answers in astronomy. Actually, this is the thing that I prepared and I was so proud of. But actually, when I arrived here, I, I, this example won't work. I have been writing some campus party around the world. And I was, I don't know why, I read it somewhere that this would be the first campus party with Wi-Fi. But not this time, you know. Uh, it's quite disappointing, but anyway, we have our public Wi-Fi that people put around. It won't kill the example. Uh, do you guys ever wonder it, how we have Wi-Fi, what Wi-Fi is, how the internet's propagating, we have internet all around. What is that, you know? So the Wi-Fi put uh, radio waves traveling around, and you have some receiver that you phone or something, and you just get it. In the early uh, 70s, the radio astronomers, they had a big problem. They had the images, the, the, the radio astronomy images, but it was full of noise. We needed to put the signal clear. And so they developed a method to put noisy, uh, smaller and the signal uh, better. This was exactly the same idea pro uh, propagated to the internet, to put internet all, all around. And in this way, we also help it to have Wi-Fi. So, uh, and at this point, you would conclude. So, okay, basically, we are studying astronomy to develop technology. And I would answer you, not only. Let's make a bridge here that I'm quite sure that at least half of you never imagined. Astronomy helped medicine. And medicine is helping astronomy. There's a connection between astronomy and medicine. So let's go there. let's go for it. Uh, both of the disciplines use x-rays. I have some picture of x-rays here that probably you guys have saw somewhere. And we have a Chandra telescope here. This is a telescope in the space. Of course, the configuration is a bit different. When we are talking about medicine, we have an x-ray source, a part of our body in the middle, and then a film in the end. What happens is, 
our bones are much more dense than the other, other tissues, the tissues and the muscles. And then the X-ray photons come, it will cross the hand, will stop in the bones and create some image like that, as we know. In the second configuration, we have what we have in the sky. We have a galaxy as source of X-rays. We have something in the middle that we want to study and we have a telescope in the sky. So, maybe until here it's, get too, it's, it's too theoretical for you. So let's give you, an, I will give you an example. You have two images there. You know, it's like a game. One of them comes from astronomy and the other one from the medicine. I will give you some time, you can look for it and you can decide which one is the sky and the other one is the path. Okay, time is over, quite fast. So the first one is uh, Cassiopeia A, is a supernova reminiscent in the Cassiopeia uh, cluster, constellation. And this is, uh, X, is an X-ray taken from the chim, the X-ray from the brain, but taken from the chim. So you can see there are pretty similarities. When you develop a method to study one image, you are automatically interfering in the other. If you're automatically helping the other. So, and then until here, maybe it's something to still, I mean, there are always people that want more and more example. I mean, it's not so clear for me why it's so important and things completely share. I mean, they have their, their reason and we go deep on it. Let's speak about big things, you know. So now, why astronomy? Uh, is needed now, I mean, how it was always, but it's chill. We have here a uh, uh, footage from Russia, uh, February 2013, and I will try to stop here. I don't know if it's gonna work. I don't think so. Anyway, we go straight to the damage. I couldn't stop the image when the, when the, when the, the meteor, the meteor uh, hit it. Maybe I can come back and we can watch it again. It's, it's quite amazing. You know, these fireballs, they are real stuff. This is no, do not speak about Hollywood movies, it's not Avengers. This is happening, this is happening all around. So, is this what we're speaking about? You know, this is not Superman. So, and this caused things like that. And then, what the first thing you would think? some stone come from the sky and hit the building. No, actually, the impact was really far away from this place. This is just a shockwave did that. On Google or something, you can look for the, the criteria it was left, that was quite big. So, but it, it was hundreds and hundreds of injured people. And then it, it starts to get quite clear that we have to look up, you know? And if you still have some doubts, you can still ask for the dinosaurs. This is the impact, the, the meteorite that killed the dinosaurs, actually, that vanished 75% of life on Earth. This is the criteria uh, in Mexico, quite big. This was really, really a huge piece of rock. It, it scavenged a lot of Earth, it uh, threw up a lot of dust, blocked the sun, everything died. Okay, I mean, but this is an event that's quite here. I mean, we're not seeing big asteroids flying all around and we are running for all the places. This, this is not happening a lot. Or maybe it is. We have this example that's becoming quite popular on the internet. And this is not something that's not true because, I mean, it's become quite popular because it will happen. Uh, we have this apophysis which is a piece of rock with the size of the, the, the Times Square building. It's actually big. And it will come really, really, really close to Earth in 2029. Here in the red one, we have the orbit of, the, of, the, of, uh, of Apophysi. And the, red, in the, the blue line, we have the Earth here moving. Here is Apophysi. You see that at some point here, they will come quite close together. What will, what will happen is the Earth will bend the, the orbit from Apophis, and this actually won't hit us. 
but then they would come even closer and in, 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 in seven years after. So it's 2036. Uh, Actually, the day is 13 April. It's a Friday. You know, we don't, we don't, <laughs> you're laughing. <laughs> we don't play with these things. This, this thing actually, they are pretty, pretty, pretty important. But in the end, you can, you can be safe. Then I, I'm quite sure that you look on Google and you know that in the end you will be safe because these things will just vanish away. So we need government applying uh, uh, money in science, you know, because we want to stay alive. So when we speak about government, it's always complicated because as I try to speak with you here all along, we need to put money in science. And nowadays it doesn't matter much if you voted for some president or not. Things are changing, you know. Uh, and this is the amount of uh, how much money, independent from where you come from, you're putting in science. So. What I want to tell you with this is that it's quite important. People have to in, in, invest in science, you know. And just uh, to finish with you, I want you to come for the classics, you know. Let's uh, just touch once more the romance and science. Don't know if you all know Carl Sagan, but he had the brilliant, uh, I mean, maybe the most beautiful idea in astronomy you will ever hear the beginning of, the, of our universe. There was only helium and hydrogen. We, are, we have plenty of carbon on our body, you know. And this carbon has to come from somewhere. We needed to make it. And actually, it is done inside the stars by fusion. We can create uh, uh, the heavier elements. So, Definitely, 90% of our body come, come from fusion that's hap that happens inside the stars. The stars will explode, this enrich the universe, but at the end of the day, you can always say that you are a piece of a star. And that's it, I hope you like it. <laughs> we'll now move on to taking some questions from the staff. Can I get uh, the handheld? The handheld. <laughs> okay. Questions? There. Uh, let me see where it is. Wait, so we're going to do it this way. You tell it to me and then I repeat it. Oh, oh look at this. Okay. Just say, just say your name at first yep. and you can make question off of absolutely whatever you want in general astronomy. Go ahead. My, my, na my name is Mateus. Mateus. Are yes. you from Brazil? I do am. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and I would ask, uh, what's your point of view? Because in our education system in Brazil, we don't have much astronomy classes in the basic education. Do you right. think that if we put some more uh, astronomy background in the school since from the beginning, would help uh, children to have more interest in, in astronomy? Cool, cool. Totally got your question. And Mateus, I am the Brazilian that has really, really, I'm really proud of being Brazilian, actually. And you, you know, I mean, as I am, the Brazil is a mess. Are there more no. Brazilians, <laughs> by the way? <laughs> hey, there's another colleague. Okay, cool. This friend of mine over there is Brazilian. So, yeah. But, I mean, obviously, the, 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 the answer for your question is yes. But it's, it's complicated. We need some, so many things all around. We need to be re-educated. And as, as, as our speaker or presenter was, uh, was saying, you know, in a world starving, we, we have, I mean, we have always this question, can we still caring for science? But yeah, we need this. You, as, I, as I showed you, you have plenty of examples how science changed our life. But definitely, the answer of your question is yes, but how it is implemented, this is quite complicated. Yeah. That I, I was. That was exactly what um, what I was thinking about. Is how how can you make people continuously remember why you're doing this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but this is this is the thing. When you when you're searching for answers all days, I mean, you start to ans to ask yourself if you need that answer, you know. But yeah, uh, we have also 
plenty of changes in, in astronomy being noted. That we have the gravitational waves uh, some some just some months ago, you know, that was quite popular. So I mean, my hope is that yeah. this kind of big things. Yeah, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Does you a have Neil deGrasse and make a show all around. Yeah, yeah. Um, questions here. Uh, my name is Chris. Um, oh, Chris. I have a question about your opinion about something. I have heard a rumor that the Soviet Union and uh, the U.S. want to cooperate in, the, in 1963 for so that the astronaut and the cosmonauts are going to get it to the moon. But uh, the plan was go in the grave with John F. Kennedy. But uh, what is your opinion about the cooperation of those super nations? Right. Uh, the thing about, I mean, your question is general about uh, traveling out of Earth. This is at first incredible if you think how we went to the moon at first. Early 80s, we had computers that were, I mean, ridiculous computers, you know, and we went there. So the capitalism took everything and we stopped the run, the run uh, 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 out of Earth, you know? So I, I don't know, you, you said about a rumor. I don't know, I don't, I don't know exactly wh the, ru the rumor you're speaking about, but the thing is, we have much, much, much technology to go even further than the moon, you know? I don't see much reason uh, for going back to the moon, actually, uh, scientifically speaking, let's say this way. When we went at first, we... we, we uh, I think... But the, what, what I mean is, if we cooperate with, uh, right now, NASA, Europe, and uh, Russia, I think maybe we will be further away than where we are at now. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe yeah. one thing is why aren't why they collaborating? Exactly. Why is everybody doing their own research? The Soviets, the U.S., China. I mean, U.S. is a quite complicated country as well. But uh, why? They, it's it's as I said to you, they have absolutely no reason. I mean, I have no idea to to say why we are not going, why we are not in mass yet. It's, it's, I mean, it's unbelievable, actually. We just stop it. We just mm. cancel it, you know, how, how we were developing things. But who knows, someday we come back. Yeah. We're taking one last question. My name is Baz. Hello. Um, you said uh, money, that money is limited is maybe a problem. But what if we uh, consist that money is unlimited? What should be the, the first or major goal? Is it to, to go to Mars or, or even further? Or got you, got you. I got completely. Uh, yeah, money is a problem. If you, if you, if you look how, how much money NASA is receiving uh, from the Cold War until now, it's, it's dropping like mad, you know. We are, we are investing less and less in science, actually. But if, if the money was infinite, you know, we had some shit, we had some password, and, uh, <laughs> and the money was forever. Uh, I think th the problem when you put too much uh, possibilities, you also receive a lot of bad things. I will give you a really, really clear example. Look, we, we all want the internet for everyone in the world. I also want that. But you see the numerous of crap we see on the internet. So, it, just imagine, you can make the, the same comparison. If you had the money all around, you can have a lot of crap science also. So, it, it, it would be good, yes, I really think so, as it, as, as it would be good to have internet for everyone. It would produce be really good things. That's a thing to think, you know. And, and if I were to add on to the question. And ju just one thing, if, you, if someone, uh, if you have more questions, if you have time, you can go for more questions, but go ahead. Yeah, uh, what we will do actually is um, you can stand over here and then people can ah, come cool, cool. up to you and ask every question. Cool. Is that what is the number one point on the agenda of the astronomy uh, research? Like what is the, the thing everybody wants to tackle right now? The Santo Graal, the dream of astronomy in the moment, is life out of Earth. The one that, the one that finds it, I mean, it will be the new Messias, for sure. Cool. cool. <laughs> Please, give it up.
And uh, Lewis will be available here on the, on the side. You can ask more questions, uh, exchange details, uh, ask m way more questions. Thank you. And he will be receiving a gift uh, from the campus party. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Nice.